Hello and welcome to the Heads and Volleys podcast with me, Lee Dunn. My guest today is a San Francisco local. His name is Joey Almeida, and he'll bring some excellent insight into our conversation and how he's approached working with teams and individuals as well. We'll begin to dive into you and your team and how you can approach individuals as well as the group. Before we get into the main part of setting up for success, I want to give a special shout out to our sponsor, Tactical Pad. You can head over to tacticalpad.com or search it in any application store that you have on your cell phone. You can find the app right there, download it. It's real simple to use. You can set your markers out on the field. You can animate the movement of your players. And it's a fantastic tool to not only have for yourself as a constant point of reference when you're planning your sessions, but also something you can share with your players. And then this podcast will actually talk about how you can involve your players in setting up for success. So Tactical Pad is a fantastic sponsor for this. You can find out more information about Tactical Pad through LeeDunSoccer.com by following me on Twitter at LeeDunSoccer. Welcome, everybody, to the first part of this series. The title of today's chat is about setting up for success. Joey Almeida right here. Joey is a head coach for San Francisco Vikings, and some of you may be familiar with him from some of our field education and player clinics. So welcome, Joey. Yeah, thanks for having me. No, thank you. I think this should be a good little chat for us to share with the coaches really on what we think setting up for success is. So the season's, what, three weeks away, four weeks away. Now practices are going to be starting this week. Really, how do we help people set up for success? My first question is going to be, what does it mean? What does setting up for success mean to you? Define what success is. So for me, success is are the players safe? Are they learning? Are they having fun? So those are three things I'm going to be focusing on throughout the season. Sure. So to me, it means reflecting and analyzing in order to establish short and long-term objectives and then to essentially come up with a plan of action in order to meet those objectives. So for example... If I want to come up with a training session, I'm going to reflect and analyze the previous game in order to figure out what my team needs to improve on. So for instance, maybe my team was struggling on building out of our half. So that's going to be my goal of the training session. And my point of action is going to be the actual session plan. And so within that session plan, I'm thinking about the activities I want to do in order to improve the ability to build out and the player actions I'm looking for and the qualities of the players that I'm looking for. So there's a lot of value in being reflective right there. So previous games or even previous seasons. So would you have any advice or recommendations for people that are just starting brand new with the team? How do you uh, go about setting up for success in that avenue? Well, uh, yeah, if it's a brand new team, then just those first couple of practices, just letting the kids play and just taking it as an opportunity to sit back, see what's going on, and then trying to recognize where your players' strengths and weaknesses are and then focusing on them from there. I really do think that if you can let them play and just become familiar with who they are and what they do and and are they having fun, then I think you can begin to plan from there. So if you don't have a plan for the season yet, don't worry about it. You're going to be able to develop that as the season goes along, especially within these first couple of weeks. So um, do you... When you work with your teams, do you create a full plan? Do you go kind of weekly? Do you go monthly? How do you set up? So I I look at it season by season. So for instance, uh, we're going into the spring season. So the main thing I'm going to focus on is our biggest competition at that time or during that season. And usually it's at the end of the season. So everything I do is going to be about preparing my players for that competition, whether it be playoffs, sure. Man State Cup, uh, whatever. And what I mean by preparing uh, physically so they, they can meet the demands of the competition as well as mentally, uh, more in terms of tactics, so every player understands their roles going into, into that tournament. So I focus on essentially the test and how I can prepare my players for the test. Now, knowing that, is the final goal how much do you react to games that are coming up during the season so let's say you go out and you play you know that you're aiming for this tournament in eight weeks time and you play your first game and you lose 10-0 now how does your planning for that how much of it is affected by that one result i mean i just i stick i stick with the plan i mean my my goal is not necessarily to to win the tournament or win games just to improve the players 
And if we win, that's just the added bonus. Sure. And I think the, the idea of setting expectations, because I think it's very easy to react to a 10-0 loss and think, oh my goodness, everything I'm yeah. doing is completely wrong. And I know I've been on the end of those results too, but if you have a good rapport with your players and you have set expectations, then everybody knows that this is the, the defining moment of the season, so that's what we're going to build towards. Yeah, absolutely. So then another real question is, you know, what's realistic? Is it realistic for a team to say, we want to win the league? Is it something realistic to say, I just want all of my players to return? Do you have kind of specifics in, in terms of what is realistic for the group of players that you're working with? So I, for me, I try to focus on what I have control over. So saying to win the league, there's a lot of variables that come into play, things that I have no control over. Yeah. But in terms of retaining a player, I feel like I have a lot of control in that, in that regard. You know, going back to the three things, you know, if the players are safe, they're having fun, they're learning, they're more likely to come back. Do you have expectations for every player or like a goal list? So by the end of the season, you are going to be able to achieve X, Y, and Z. Do you have anything like that? Do you ever, do you ever set that with players? Yeah, so, you know, going back to, you know, what if you take a new team over and, and I do this with my teams too. The first couple of practices, I just let the kids play. And while they're playing, that's an opportunity for me to pull players aside and have a, a little discussion and talk about what their goal for the season is. So, you know, for instance, the first question uh, I'll ask them is, you know, what are your strengths and weaknesses? And then once they outline those, you know, I'll say, yeah, you know, always continue to develop your strengths. And now the weaknesses, you know, how can we turn these weaknesses into strengths? And then we come up with a, a plan of action. So something like maybe a player wants to improve juggling. Sure. So we'll say, okay, in one month, where do you think you could be at? And we'll ask them, where do you think you could be at? If he says a thousand, then we may say, okay, you know, maybe you want to lower it a little bit, right? But if you say a hundred, you know, maybe maybe that's that's realistic for that player. Yeah. And then so that meeting is essentially the starting point, and then they have to come up with a plan of action. So maybe it's juggling for five minutes twice a week, and then you know throughout that month, maybe halfway through, we meet and, and kind of see where he's at, and if if he's gonna, maybe he's already met his goal. So then maybe we need to make it a little bit more challenging or maybe he's a long way from getting to 100 then maybe we lower it a little bit. So yeah, I, just meeting with the players. Yeah, I think it's, it's super valuable because you build a relationship with Absolutely. them. And now I'm able to say, hey, Joey, how are you? Hey, Joey, how are your juggles coming? Have you been juggling? Have you been practicing? Because I can hold you accountable yeah, then and, too. And to, to add to that, it's also great to get the parents involved because the parents want to know what you're doing. Of course. And so now you bring the parent involved, the parent can hold the player accountable too. And it could be something like the kid wants to work on passing. Now he can pass the ball back and forth with his, with his mom or dad or maybe he wants to work on dribbling to be a defender. He can play 1v1. Mm. So it becomes it becomes fun and not necessarily a, a chore, you know? Yeah, so absolutely, yeah. Just trying to find a way to make it enjoyable and but at the same time get the players to take responsibility for their development. So would you put an emphasis more on individuals than a team goal? Yeah, but also team goals are, are important too. Okay. Are important too. So, you know, in terms of uh, team goal, you know, once again, I, I would take a similar approach. It's, you know, what are, what are the team's strengths? What are the team's weaknesses? And this would be a collaborative eth effort. It'd be a conversation with all the players. And then we try to come up with a goal that we believe is achievable. And then we set actions or steps to work towards that. And so that brings me on to one of my, one of my favorite parts is involving players in their decision-making that's going on. So it's the right for a coach to turn up and say, hey, we're going to work on passing this week, but how much do you ownership do coaches give their players? And I think this is something we spoke about before where if you're not giving the players the buy-in or the opportunity to have a voice heard, regardless of their age, I feel like they may begin to resent what they're being told sometimes yeah. and they could begin to push back on that. Yeah, yeah, and uh, you know, it's kind of like the approach you first took. This is what we're going to do. You know, maybe ask the players, hey, what do you think we need to work on? Sure. And then you know, they might say, oh, yeah, we need to work on passing. So now we're on the, on the same page. And then you ask them, oh, how do you think we can improve on the passing? And you, you, know, you take the input that they get and you put it into consideration. Mm -hmm. And you know, once again, once they're involved, 
they're more likely to get it done. So. And I think as, a, as an introductory coach too, or somebody with a little bit of experience or even a lot of experience, you ask your players, they will generally give you real accurate topics to work on. And then as a coach, you can go as deep as you want with that. Absolutely. So if, for example, passing, we all like to work on passing, but why in what area? So you talk Absolutely, about yeah. building out of the back, passing yeah. with a purpose. Is it passing in terms of crossing to finish so we can score a goal? Or is it passing into feet or into space? Absolutely. And now as a coach, you can begin to challenge your players in different ways. And you constantly have the buy-in. Remember you said we're going to work on passing? Well, yeah. this is one of those ways Absolutely. that we really need to work on this. Yeah, and one uh, important thing that you hit is also uh, we got to be able to measure measure it. So every time we cross the half, that's that's a success, yeah. right? So whatever our goal is, it has to be measurable. And, and so you and the team have to figure out what is measurable and what is success. So to, to wrap this up then, we look at, the season as a whole, in terms of setting up a success, setting a plan, whether it is in a 7, 8, 9, 10 game season, now realistically a 50% win ratio. Maybe if they lost all of their games last season, it might be a one game win because that's something that is possibly achievable. Yeah. Of course, these yeah. are things that may be out of your control, Absolutely. but then as a team, you can then build, we want to win a game. If, yeah. it, if it's at that level, we want to. doesn't mean we're going to, but we yeah. want to. Then, to then set up for success further, how is Joey going to help us win a game? How is Lee going to help us win a game? How is little David going to help us win a game? So then you've set this team goal, and then you begin to identify with each player how they can have an impact. But it's also an impact that's going to benefit them because they're going to become a better soccer player, more confident, more having more fun out yeah. there. Do we, do we try and plan too much on, at U12, you have to be able to do this, this, and this? Or at seventh grade, we should be expecting this, this, and this? Or do we just try and keep it as open for the players? How do you feel? Yeah, uh, keep it open. I mean, if we say you have to be able to do this at a, at a certain age, well, then that means they should be playing down, and that's not really possible, and it's also kind of demoralizing. Yeah. At the end of the day, you know, every player develops at different different ages, different you know, some players are physically more yep. developed and so are more successful. But if they're not developing their skill at the older age groups, you know, they're, they're going to struggle. So, yeah, just focusing on every player individually and just understanding what their strengths and weaknesses are and, and helping the players by guiding them to work on those areas. So something really important that I think we're both trying to get across here is that yes we may have this big goal winning a tournament winning a game winning the season winning the division but there's so much more in the middle of that that is so valuable that this final goal can be achieved it's possible but it's only possible by filling in the gaps in the middle where you work with players you guide players you love the players effectively and you challenge them in their own way yeah so then a uh, final question really on kind of what is the biggest impact that you can make as a coach in terms of success for your players and for your team? So I, I think the biggest impact a coach can have when it comes to youth soccer is preparing players for the real world. So we're not only teaching the game of soccer, we're actually teaching the game of life. So if a player is a good teammate, you know, can collaborate, cooperate, knows how to communicate with his players or his teammates, coaches, referees in a respectful manner, works hard, is resilient. That's going to help him on the field. It's also going to help him off the field and also in, in the real world when they go to high school, college, and get a real job. So we have an opportunity to positively influence these players through our words and actions. You know, so if I want my players to be honest, I need to be honest with them. Right. If I want them to work hard, I have to work hard myself. If I expect them not to quit, I can't quit, right? So, I mean, there's times where, you know, a coach is in a game, he's all animated and he's, he's coaching. All of a sudden, they, they're down 1-0 with a minute left and he sits down. He's quit, right? And so what message have you sent to your players, right? So it's okay to quit. But if you're, no, guys, come on, we can get back in this and encouraging them. You know, you're teaching them that no matter what, you keep playing. Yeah. And so it's all the little life lessons that, that we can teach them. And I think for me, it's much along those lines where I create a goal. 
or a plan that encompasses the goal for the season or for the month, however I'm working. And I tend to work within like monthly cycles. And that to me keeps me accountable. And I share it with the players too. You are involved in this. You are also part of this team. No different to me. And actually you have more power than I do because you're on the field executing. Absolutely. I can create the environment, but you are the ones executing. And so when I feel most connected to my players, when they say, coach, we agree that we should be doing this or we think maybe we can change and do something different, whatever it is, that collaboratively we now have a plan. And that's what we live by, whether it's for the month or for the season. Yeah, because the reality is we're all students of the game, including we're, we're still learning ourselves. And the game is always evolving, so there's always an opportunity to learn. And, and it's important that the players know that we can learn from each yeah, other. Absolutely. And I think my, my kind of summary here will be that if you are a volunteer coach or even a paid coach and you have another job and you're often screeching to the field because you're two minutes late or two minutes before the start, if you've got an overall plan in place, that is so much better that gives you the structure to then, if you are winging it at practice, we both love to plan sessions, but if you are not able to, having this bigger plan will help you to stay within a framework that's going to stay true to your goal. Absolutely. And if you, if you involve your players, they will keep you as honest as possible too. Yeah, absolutely. And you're going to feel more confident. You're going to be able to run a better session. Your players will respect you more because they know that you're prepared mm. and you seem more knowledgeable and you're going to be able to understand the needs of your players better and how and what you can do to help them improve in, in those areas. So that's us setting up for success, an idea of looking at the big picture and then really whittling down to the individuals and how you guys are going to achieve it as a group, as a group that is now classed as a team maybe your first season together, maybe your 10th season together, but how do you set up for success? Joey, thank you so much. Thank you. A huge thank you for joining us on Heads and Volleys today. Setting up for success is the goal. And of course, we want you to share this word as much as possible. Follow me again on Twitter, at Lee Dunn Soccer. Give me a tag. Share this podcast through any of your podcast avenues to all of your friends that coach or parents that may be interested in how they can help engage with their players on setting them up for success as an individual too. A reminder of our sponsor, Tactical Pad. You can find more information on leadonsoccer.com. You can also get a free trial through them at tacticalpad.com. Thank you again for listening to the Heads and Volleys podcast. More content coming very soon.